In today's video, I'm going to show you a powerful tool for doing your own research in crypto, and that tool is known as Artemis. Artemis is a tool that tracks fundamental analysis of different blockchains, such as usage, number of users, number of transactions, and more. And in today's video, I'm going to go through the ins and outs of how to actually use this tool to find those stats for yourself. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. As always, nothing in this video is financial advice. This is purely educational about how to do your own research, and any particular cryptos or blockchains I talk about in this are purely examples. So that way you can go forth and do your own analysis. All right, so now let's take a look at the tool. This is the homepage of Artemis, and first thing you'll see are some high level stats about overall crypto market. You have the total crypto market cap, the total number of users, the total number of transactions in the past 24 hours, as well as the overall market performance of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and how those compare to some key benchmarks like gold and the NASDAQ. And isn't that interesting, actually, year to date? Year to date, uh, Bitcoin's not doing not doing too shabby, right? It's not doing too shabby at all compared to some of these benchmarks. As you scroll down, you'll see some other things such, such as trending categories, trending applications, trending contracts. We'll look at all of those a bit more in the future. And then you have some overall fundamental metrics for the entire crypto market, such as stablecoin transaction volume, blockchain daily active addresses, stablecoin market cap, and so on. Uh, and that's pretty handy to get an overall sense of the market. Uh, but where I think Artemis really shines is in the comparable section over here. So we're going to go there and then I'll talk about how you would use all of these individual metrics over here in the comparable section. First thing, thing by default you'll be on is the chains tab. And this is really where we're going to focus for most of, most of this video. And here you see stats such as daily active addresses, daily transactions, TVL, DEX volume, as well as others. And many of these stats you can find on other applications that I've made other videos on, such as DeFi Llama and Token Terminal. But what you can't really find, at least not that I've seen on, on uh, other sites, is a consolidated view of the daily active addresses and daily transactions trend across several blockchains compared, and especially not where you can actually choose which blockchains you want to include and choose the time frame. And so I think Artemis really shines with this. And uh, let's dive into this a little deeper now. First, what exactly do daily active addresses and daily active transactions use mean? Well, daily active addresses is the number of unique wallet addresses that's sending on-chain transactions in a rolling 24-hour period. And so, for example, if we look at Ethereum over the past 24 hours, this means that basically 326,000 addresses have sent a transaction on Ethereum in the past 24 hours. And not all of these are gonna be unique users, some of these could be companies, some of these could be applications. Some of these could be one users, one user that's sending multiple transactions, right? I've got like four or five at least Ethereum wallets, probably more in truth. Uh, and so it's not exactly going to be one to one, but it's the best proxy we have with on-chain data. And then the second thing is going to be daily transactions. And daily transactions are the total number of transactions registered on-chain in a rolling 24-hour period. And this is going to be relevant in a second. We talk about Solana. This doesn't include Solana's voting transactions. So people often say that Solana has, we'll see it has a lot of transactions. People say it's because of the voting transactions. This doesn't include those. All right. Yeah. And so, so this is pretty good gauge as well. One thing that's important to note here is A, transactions can be heavily, heavily influenced by airdrop farming. Some of these chains don't have tokens yet. People are trying to qualify for airdrops when they deploy a token and so those people are just wash trading sending transactions back and forth and so especially if transactions are cheap they can be heavily influenced by airdrops and the second thing is not all transactions are created equal for example i love arbitrum i've talked about ethereum scaling solutions ethereum rollups a lot on this channel arbitrum has 565,000 transactions over the past day ethereum has 1.03 million this is obviously the day i'm recording this video I don't think 56% as much value is being transacted on Arbitrum as Ethereum. And that's the reason for that is, is simple, right? The Ethereum transactions are more expensive, so they're going to tend to be, they're going to tend to be more valuable. Whereas Arbitrum transactions are cheaper, so people can send small amounts back and forth. And that's still good for usage, right? Uh, it's still a useful metric, but you have to take that into account when comparing things across different chains. All right. And so let's uh, dive into this a little bit more. As you can see, they've got a whole bunch of chains here. We're going to add a few of them just for some examples. We'll add ZK Sync Era. We'll add Solana. We'll add Polygon. Throw in Polygon ZK EVM. 
Let's see, what else do we want to see here? We'll throw in Cardano. We'll throw in BNB chain. We'll throw in base. Great. We'll throw in Aptos. Why not? All right. Don't take it personally if I didn't. Oh, wow. That is a freaking, that is, that is a mess, isn't it? Let's change it to linear. All right. I'll, I'll have to compare some of these out, but this is going to be good for, good for the exercise. So first thing you see here, BNB chain has a ton of active addresses, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that it's three times as valuable as Polygon for the reasons we talked about earlier. Uh, but you can see here, okay, so if you thought BNB chain was dead, you were actually, you're incorrect because they have close to a million active addresses on any given day. Now let's take that out because that's kind of messing up the chart. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, and then if you look here, for example, we can see that that uh, yesterday, Ethereum and Polygon had very comparable number of addresses at 308 and 306,000. ZK Sync era had 228,000. That's the airdrop farming I mentioned a second ago because they don't have a token yet. And then Solana had 192.7 thousand. So basically 193,000 on Solana. Uh, and then you can just see it going down the list there. And if we change this to log, for example, then it can be a bit more, bit more uh, comparable. And this is just over a one month period. Similarly with daily transactions, we can see Solana is dominating 16 million, 18 million, 15 million. I mean, no one even comes close. Polygon has 2.3 million. Ethereum has 1 million. Again, the thing to keep in mind is that because Solana transactions are so cheap, a lot of these are going to be micropayments. There's people interacting with more complex applications where, where they're making potentially dozens of transactions, hundreds of transactions a day. So just keep that in mind that, that these transactions aren't necessarily as valuable, but it does give you a sense of the power of throughput. Uh, and then scrolling, going all the way down to it, we have Polygon ZK EVM, which is, which is running more like 25, 30,000 transactions on most days, although it looks like they had slightly fewer yesterday. I don't know if that number is incomplete. Uh, and yeah, and this is going to just be a good way to, good way to gauge the overall activity. But uh, I'm going to clear some of these out because I think where it really excels is to view the activity across time. Let's see, we're going to get rid of Cardano. We will keep Ethereum. Let's see, I'll get rid of Polygon. I'm just going to do Poly, I'm going to do Ethereum and then a couple Ethereum layer twos. And we're going to look at it, let's say over the past year. And let's look at it in linear. So this is getting a bit more interesting here because we see, for example, Arbitrum transactions had a major run up in the spring, spiked when they did their airdrop, spiked again, uh, and we're still pretty high. And then they've kind of been in a downtrend for most of the year since. They seem to have stabilized recently. Hopefully their new grants pro program is able to stabilize it, but you can see they've been a downtrend for much of the year. Optimism similarly had a bit of a peak in July and then has been kind of in a downtrend. Whereas base, let's see if we can zoom in three months. Base, which is the new Coinbase layer two, kind of the new kid on the block, had a major spike in September from friend tech, another spike a couple weeks ago, and then has been in kind of a downtrend for the past couple of weeks, uh, but is still pretty comparable to Arbitrum and Optimism, which is impressive considering considering it's new. Uh, and that's basically how I would use this to get a sense of the activity on different chains. And then if you want to dive in a little deeper, they also have their activity monitor dashboard, which is really helpful. And what this does is this lets you dive into active addresses, transactions, and gas or transaction fees on specific applications or categories. So for example, Say I wanted to see what was actually driving activity on base, then I could go to base and look at historical data from the last 24 hours in terms of in terms of trending categories, applications, and contracts. And so for example, we can see that of the transactions on base, 166,000 of them were on Frentech over the past 24 hours. I mean, there's no comparison. Then there's layer zero, then there's USDC, then there's Stargate, then there's Aerodrome. But I mean, just look at that. There's no comparison. It has, you know, what is that? Five times, six times the number of transactions of the, of the next closest application and tons of active addresses, right? It's got like, just it blows these other up six times the number of active addresses, the next most application. So obviously very impressive. Uh, and then you can also look at the change. So you could look at, for example, say, okay, which of these applications are seeing a surge in transactions, a surge in active addresses, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you could do the same thing for entire categories. So say we wanted to look at, let's look at another chain. 
let's look at uh, let's look at Arbitrum here. Okay, so we're going to Arbitrum, and let's look at which categories are actually generating the most number of transactions and active addresses on Arbitrum. Well, if we sort sort by category here, and we sort by transactions, then we can see that wallet transfers, DeFi, and bridges are dominating here. In terms of active addresses, it's also wallet transfers, bridges, and then ERC20 tokens and stable coins. And so that can give you an idea if you're trying to get a sense of the landscape of the network, or you're trying to maybe figure out the use case of the network, or you're trying to bet on the flagship applications of the network, what are people actually using the network for? Uh, and that's the activity monitor, very powerful tool, and very much people are not aware of it. And then the final thing that I would show you on Artemis is I would take this with a grain of salt, but they do have an interesting tab for developer activity. It's over here on the comparables page, and then you go to the developer activity tab. And here you can, for example, see the number of develop weekly devs measured through GitHub on Ethereum, Polkadot, Cosmos, Bitcoin, Solana, etc. The thing to keep in mind is you got to take this with a grain of salt. This number can be easily, easily fudged, uh, and especially weekly commits can depend very heavily on how often people commit their personal preferences. But if you look at this on a long-term time horizon, it can give you, you know, it, it can give you a bit of signal as to where people are moving. So if you do see one that's starting to go up, starting to get more developers, it can be, can be a signal that they're successfully attracting developers. And if you want more tools like this, I want to add that I also made a crypto tool wiki, which is totally free on my Substack that has over 100 different tools for crypto research, for crypto security, trading, token unlocks, airdrops, wallet tracking on chain analysis, all this stuff, uh, pretty much anything you could want to do in crypto. There's a tool for it here. I'll link this down in the description, but definitely check that out if you want to learn more about how to do your own research. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.